Today I'm using some raspberry blossom honey and I'm making two different meads with it. Let's get started. So in today's video, I'm splitting a one gallon raspberry mead into two different things. I am leaving one as a traditional raspberry blossom mead. And then the other one I am adding some hops into. Now, I've already made this mead, and so I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. Essentially, it was, it was pretty easy to do, and I'm, I'm hoping that both products are very nice. Here is the main recipe I started with. Um, I had all of my honey and my water and my yeast and put them into the fermenter. Mixed it all up. I used the Lutra Kvike yeast, the raspberry blossom honey, and of course water um, to start. And then I added some dimonium phosphate as a yeast nutrient. Super simple. Um, that's the starting point for this mead. Once I split them into two things, I had these two recipes, which I'll show you right now. So the traditional one, if you were to just make a traditional raspberry blossom mead, would be three pounds of raspberry blossom honey. Uh, one gallon spring water, five grams of Kvaik Lutra. You don't really need five grams. You probably need two to three. I just used five. And one teaspoon of dimonium phosphate. If you wanted to do a hopped version, um, you would do similar. Uh, three pounds of raspberry blossom honey, one gallon of sparkling, not sparkling, of spring water. Um, you know, two to three grams of Kvaik yeast. Uh, one teaspoon of dap, and then I used half of an ounce of lemon drop hops. You could use whatever hops. So we've mixed in our honey water yeast for this base of this mead, and now we are going to take a gravity reading. I took a gravity reading and found that it was setting at 1.072, which is somewhere in that realm of, I think, a 9%-ish mead. I'll put it somewhere, but it uh, had a good starting point. The Kvike yeast would or will go through that entire gravity. It went through the primary fermentation, meaning that it, uh, the sugars were consumed by the yeast and converted into alcohol. Um, after that primary fermentation, it ended at 1.000, which means that it went dry, quote. This is where we split it into two different batches. So I put half, uh, half gallon into one thing and half gallon into another and I left one alone, which was my traditional. I just left it alone for the moment, just to settle down. It needed some time to chill out. The other one, I ended up taking and adding um, some the, of the lemon drop hops to. So that's that half ounce. I put them into there and I let them set for a couple days. They only needed a little bit of time. It's called dry hopping. Um, that, that process right there is called dry hopping. Then I came back after that time and I wanted to make them sweeter. So this is where you get to see two different methods. I needed to bottle carbonate the hopped version so I could not, I was not able to put a fermentable sugar in to back sweeten it. I had to use a thing called erythritol, which is a non-fermentable plant-based sugar that is, um, actually I really like it, but it's basically a good emulation of sugary taste and, and honey. I used erythritol to back sweeten to taste for that one. And then I added these little carbonation tabs to bottles and racked on top of that. The carbonation tab is real sugar that the yeast can eat and they fermented on that uh, fermentable sugar, left the non-fermentable alone and have hopefully created bottle carbonation in this. The traditional one um, I needed to stabilize in order to back sweeten safely because yeast would still be able to ferment. So essentially what I did was um, I took and added uh, potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite, which are used to halt yeast fermentation to this mead. And uh, I let it sit for a couple days to let that mix in. And then I added more honey back to it. I added the, some raspberry blossom honey to further back sweeten to the point that I felt like was sweet enough, which was about 1.005. Um, at that point, it sat like this. I haven't bottled it. I've been kind of lazy. That's the whole process. That is a lot of information. So if you need to go back and, and check that out, um, this mead, I wanted this mead to be demonstrating two different ways to go about this process. So 
let's first of all see if we have any carbonation in this bottle. Now I will say I'm a little skeptical because my last two experiences with these carbonation tabs have not yielded a very carbonated mead, but let's find out about the carbonated version. There's a slight hiss. It should have worked because that yeast, the yeast can eat the sugar. I don't think it was enough priming sugar to actually do anything in this case, which is a bit of a bummer. So now let's go ahead and pour it and see. Yeah, we're not carbonated. That's a bummer. It's still hopped, but it's not carbonated. Um, I think if I'd used real priming sugar, it would have actually bottle carbonated. Those little tabs, I don't think we're strong enough. I didn't rack completely off my yeast, and so there were theoretically yeast in there. So this is the hopped version right here. This is the non-hopped. You can see the hopped is actually surprisingly clearer than the non-hopped. This is the traditional, and it is. it has a little bit of problem to it, which is interesting. Um, let's taste test them. Ooh, ooh, that's juicy and smooth and the raspberry is bright. The bright floral mixed with um, this fruitiness from the honey. Mmm, that is fantastic. The hops have this nice little coating effect and it's um, adding a little bit to the brightness. The lemon drop hops have that citrusy kind of vibe and so I'm getting a citrus and a raspberry and a, all of that. The erythritol, Tasted really good too. That is fantastic. Holy cow. Uh, it's not carbonated, which is a bummer, but even with it not being carbonated, still very good. Let's hop on over to the traditional one, which was back sweetened with real, uh, no, I won't say real. I'll say um, raspberry blossom honey. It was actually back sweetened with more honey. Interesting. This one's also very good. They have vastly different bodies. This one is a little um, lighter, more refreshing. This one has a more tannic value. I think the honey, because it is more viscous, adds a little bit more mouthfeel, more tannic value than let's say erythritol. They both are the same ABV at this point. There should be relatively close. Uh, um, this one has a, uh, a nicer honey character because we did back sweeten with that raspberry blossom honey. This is, these are both really good. I am very shocked. I'm super bummed, honestly, that this one didn't carbonate and a, a easy way to fix this would have been probably to use real priming sugar. I have nothing against those little tabs. They've worked for me in the past. They didn't work for this mead for whatever reason. So that's unfortunate, but that's what happened. The um, other thing you can do would be to take and keg this. So you could take your, your recipe and you could um, stabilize it like we did with this one. You could back sweeten with more raspberry blossom honey if you wanted to. And then of course, uh, force carbonate it, which is that kegging system. What's important to note is that you have to stabilize prior to back sweetening with a fermentable sugar, like regular sugar, like dextrose, like uh, honey. All of those things are fermentable. If you don't, you run the risk of creating a overly carbonated mead, which in many instances, uh, if it's too carbonated, could actually explode bottles. So I wanna encourage you to be careful. You know, if you're gonna carbonate something in a bottle, make sure you do it with the right amount of priming sugar. There's a, um, a calculator I put down in the description if you need to know how much to use. So this little half gallon recipe on each side can of course be upscaled to two, three, 200 gallons if you wanted to. And my encouragement to you would be to test this recipe and or alter it in some form or fashion, but try to use raspberry blossom honey. I think that it turned out to be really good. I'm a huge fan of both of them. Would this one have been better carbonated? Quite possibly, honestly, but in its current state, it's still good. Things don't always work out. This is a testament that sometimes you try stuff and it doesn't work, but don't chalk it up as a loss until um, until it truly is a loss. So that's been a raspberry blossom, um, traditional and hopped mead. Again, upscale that to whatever size you want, but go and make some mead. And I know you might not have a bunch of fermenters, but make sure you go ahead and uh, probably buy some more because you're gonna need to start making some more mead. And then of course, um, just try things. So if you need equipment, if you need anything in the world, go check out my uh, website, manmademead.com. I have Amazon links, I have YouTube videos, I have how to's, I have everything there. Um, all of that stuff is just very fun and I enjoy getting to make this content for you. I hope you'll go check that out. This has been great. 
I'll be back with more traditional meads, hopped meads, crazy flavors, all of those things. Um, I'll see you guys next time in a future video. Cheers. Mm -hmm.